some equations are not factorable but still have a solution. And these solutions are irrational solutions. We can find these and we can estimate these by sketching the graphs of these. So for example, we have an equation here, x squared plus 3x minus 3 equals 0. If we sketch this graph, we plug in our x and y coordinates. Okay, negative 3, we plug in negative 3, we're going to end up with 9 minus 9 minus 3, which is going to be negative 3. So negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, negative 5. When we plug in 0, we get a y-intercept of 3, negative 3, 1 over 1 up, 2 over 7 up. Notice that these, these coordinates are not very symmetrical, and so it gives us a little bit harder time to figure it out. But if we take a look at the symmetrical points, we can kind of estimate that the vertex is somewhere at negative 1 half. And we sketch in the solution to this, sketch in the graph of this, our graph is going to look something like this. And we can estimate that our solution to this equation then, equal to zero, can be found somewhere around here. So somewhere around maybe negative, uh, looks like negative 3.9, somewhere around there, maybe positive 0.9. Okay, now these are just estimates, but we can see that where the graph crosses the x-axis, we can get our solution. Now if we want to get our solution here, the, a more accurate value of solution, we put it into our graphing tools, and we solve by graphing. So when we plug this in, we can solve this equation here, this negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 5, if we graph this. Okay, so use your Desmos graphing tool. Negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 5. When I graph this, I just use a standard, standard window. I get a graph that kind of looks like this. And I'm not going to draw in the vertex, and usually I draw in the vertex because that is the most important part of the graph. But really, when we're solving equations, we're not looking at the whole graph anymore. We're really looking at where it crosses the x-axis, here and here. So when we find those, one of the solutions here is at 3.2, approximately 2.7. And we have another solution over here at negative 0 0.77. Okay, so we can solve these by graphing and on the graphing tools and find a much more accurate decimal value for this. So it comes into that we can solve some of these algebraically as well. Okay, and algebraically, if we solve them by algebra, we're basically undoing the calculation. So we can undo this calculation by doing plus 9 on both sides. And we undo squares by square rooting. So we end up with x. And when we undo by square rooting, we have to make sure that we keep both the plus and minus. In this case, since it's a perfect square, we get plus minus 3. Now, this quadratic we cannot solve by algebra very easily because it's hard to get rid of the minus times and squared. In fact, it's not so much the minus, but it's the times 3 and the squared is happening on the x at the same time. And we cannot get rid of a squared with a and a times at the same time. So basically, what makes equation b much harder to isolate x? Well, we have a square and a 3x together. Which cannot be undone at the same time.
Okay, so this is a, becomes an issue here. So if we knew how to just make this into a times or just into a perfect square, maybe we could solve this. And I seem to recall that we had a way of making this into a perfect square to be able to undo the square. So we also want to look at the number of roots or number of solutions. So there are some quadratics that don't have any solutions. Some of them have one solution and some of them have two solutions. So if I graph this, this function, I'm going to end up with a graph that looks like this. Okay, so my parabola, and I have my vertex here, and if I just find my vertex, my vertex is at 1.25, 3.875, and it opens upwards. Well, the solutions happen where the graph crosses zero. Okay, so where this is equal to zero is along this x-axis here. And it does not it does not cross that x-axis. So there must be no solution to this. And we'll look at what that looks like algebraically a little later on. But that right now, we just know by the shape of the graph physically it doesn't cross the x-axis. There cannot be a solution here. So the possibilities with the number of solutions we can determine based on shape. And we can base, base this on shape in this way. We can say that because of the shape of the parabola, it's possible that the parabola has no solution. Based on the parabola, because it has a vertex, it could have possibly just one solution where it crosses the x-axis. And finally, the most common situation will probably be where we have two solutions where the graph crosses the x-axis on two occasions. So because of the shape of the parabola, we can establish the number of possible solutions, and then we're going to connect some algebra to this later on.